everybody it's sam here thank you for watching so today i'm going to show you how to make this very cool looking gift box and this is actually this year's selection box so if anybody's new to my channel i think this is the third year maybe the fourth where i have made alternative selection boxes those if you're not familiar in the uk we have them traditionally given at christmas time and they are filled with chocolates and years ago they would be really good value and you'd have full-size chocolate bars and they were really good but over the years let's just say they've got very small they've shrunk in size so i have started doing my own and i always give these to my best friend and her husband every year and it's become a bit of a thing now and they expect it every year so <laughs> this one's slightly different and you'll see i've got the addition of the wine inside but you can see here it all holds itself really nicely you can carry this now the wine is optional what you put in this part is completely up to you and it doesn't have to be for Christmas you could have a nice candle in here you could have maybe some small clothing rolled up there's lots and lots of um you know options there but what this one does is you can undo the fastenings on the side and these boxes will drop down and it's the same all around each one will drop down and then it will just leave whatever it is in the middle. So you can see there the wine, this can all just then kind of fall out. I think it looks really cool. And then in each of the boxes are loads of chocolates. So if I just open this one, for example, I'm not gonna take them all out, but I've got flakes, I've got Freddos, I've got all sorts. There's just so many, and I'll show you all the, cho all the chocolates that I've used later on. But um, yeah, it's really, really easy to make. It's all deconstructed. Like I said, if you're not celebrating Christmas or you're done with your Christmas makes this year, because I know this is later than I would normally make it, then, um, you know, imagine this with birthday papers. You know, maybe you want to do some nice Valentine makes. Mother's Day, you name it, this is going to work. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be a drink in the middle. It could be anything you want. So very straightforward to make. Let's get started. So I've already done four of the boxes. You can see how they look there. I mean, without the kind of hinge on the bottom, they're nice boxes on their own. And then this is the paper pad that I've used. It's a couple of years old. I think I brought this probably even <laughs> three years ago, maybe from the Creative Craft Show. Uh, 2.99. So a little red robin. You might be able to find it online still. And then these are all the pieces you're going to need. So for the the very bottom, so the base of this caddy or bag, if you want to add the grey board, then that will be just under six and a half squared. So just come in slightly. Then you'll want a piece of card that's six and a half squared. And then the pattern paper on top, six and a quarter squared. Don't stick the pattern paper on just yet. I've got a little bit too organised. You'll see later, it doesn't matter, but I would recommend just having them ready, but don't actually stick them on. This is just a piece of um, chipboard or grey board from the back of my one of my um, watercolour pads because I've run out, but this is two mil. So uh, it's nice and strong. That's going to sit over the top there and just reinforce the bottom, but that's only if you're putting something heavy in. If you still wanna put some gifts in, then I'd maybe cut that six and a half piece of card, maybe two or three times and stick them together with a construction glue and that'd be nice and strong as well. Okay, so to make the boxes, you're gonna want four pieces that are 11 and a half by eight. Along the 11 and a half side, you're gonna score at half an inch, one and a half, six and seven and then rotate it so that half inch tabs at the top and you're going to score at one six and a half and seven and a half like i said you want to do that four times then i'm going to talk you through all the mats and layers while i've got them here so for the front and back of the boxes so this is the front for me, it's what you'll see from the outside and then it's gonna flip or fall down and you'll reveal the stars. You might have the same paper. I would recommend on the inside, not having a directional because if you imagine this is my pattern, I want when it falls down, I want it to be the right way up. So it would be upside down inside. So just something to think about. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world, it doesn't really matter. So you're going to, in total, want eight pieces of four and a quarter by five and a quarter. Four for the inside and then four for the outside. Then for the hinges on the bottom of all of the boxes, so just here, again, you might want to just stick them right on and not have them fall down. It's entirely up to you. These are two by four and a half. I've just come under slightly, just bring it in so it's, you know, just under four and a half. 
Along that two inch side, just score it two and fold in half. And again, you'll see how they look on the bottom there. If you want to do the little closure on the front, this was more decorative for me. They do close on their own, but it's just another way to, to open them if you want to. Then you'll want four pieces of one and a half squared. And along one of the sides, you're going to score at one. Okay, and then you can just fold that one down like so. Again, optional, but if you want to do those side tabs with the hook and loop so that, again, it allows everything to fall down, then you'll want four pieces of one by four and a half and then four pieces of three quarters by three and three quarter. So you can see that those four there, I've already stuck them down. And then for your mats and layers, you're going to want eight pieces of three quarters by five and a quarter to cover the long sides of each box. And then to cover the top, you're going to want four pieces of three quarters by four and a quarter. OK, so now you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines and we'll make the box. OK, so with the half inch tab on the left hand side in the corner here, you'll have a little rectangle. You want to remove that one completely and then just cut up each of these score lines to that first score line. OK, and then just take a nice wedge off of the sides of those little tabs. Then flip it all the way around. So now that half inch tabs on the right hand side and you're going to cut down all these score lines again, but this time to the second score line. So past the first, down to the second, past the first, down to the second and again. Very end there, you're just going to cut that away. So now you've created this half inch tab and just take a little wedge off of each end like so. And then at the tops of these squares, you just can cut that away completely. OK, flip it back around this way and then fold this down. All of this section we're going to cut away. So I'm going to use my longer scissors here and just cut right across. Like so. So now you want to repeat that on all the other pieces. Next, to pop it together, you're going to add your glue. I'm going to use construction glue now on everything so that it's nice and strong. You're just going to add your glue all down that half inch tab. Keep that folded down and then fold this panel and your um, one inch panel. Fold that all down so the, the box is now folded in half. And just fold it back the other way and just give that a really good burnish. And then flip it over and with the tops here, the outer side, just take a little bit off. Don't take too much, just a little bit. You can always take a bit more off later because you want to make sure if you don't want to add those extra bits that I'm going to add to the box, you want to make sure that this box can lock closed itself. So just cut a little bit off of the ends of that tab as well. When you fold all this in, you want this to be able to close but be quite snug if you're finding it's really still struggling like that corner is probably a bit too tight i'm going to take a little bit more off you can sometimes see i can see there's a bit of score line there so i reckon if i just remove that bit there that should make it easier now there we go and it's staying closed on its own. Then I'm going to stick down this one first and I'm gonna add my glue onto these two tabs and then fold in the sides like so. Fold down, oh, all of that there. Flip it over, just gonna open that back up again. Just take a ruler or something that you can you can lay inside there just to apply a bit more pressure and make sure that's all secure. Okay, so now I can decorate. So the side that faces outside, you want your opening to close like so. So this is going to be outside the box. So I'm going to stick that one down and then stick that one on the back and then stick the other mats and layers on those sides. Okay, now with this one here, I'm going to take some of my quick grab glue because it's only a small part and just run your glue all over that tab. 
and then keeping it folded down and this folded down you're going to sit it over the top so it's in the middle now although they're both half inch tabs because of the way that you folded them you're probably going to have an overhang so just flip it over and just trim that away but now we've just got that slightly different closure and that's where i'm now going to add my hook and loop underneath this bit here so i've just got the 10 mil so just pair them together pop it underneath and then close that you'll find once you've got stuff inside the box you've got a bit more like to push against but that's going to be fine for the minute and then with the hinge you want to stick it so that the, so the fold is facing the front okay so again this is going to be on the outside of the box the fold is facing the front so i'm going to add my glue again using that construction glue again all on the back and then just stick that one down and i'm just going to stick these pieces on the sides okay so all of those now are ready i'm just going to put them to one side until i've prepared the base so if you want to add the handle like i have we need to cut some slots into this piece so just grab your bottle of wine sit it in the middle and then i just marked either side I'm trying to make this as easy as possible now my cut lines are two inches long and that's only because i'm using this wide ribbon for the handle and then for the measurements you just want to make sure that your box has got room to sit next to it so there's about half an inch there so i wouldn't you know go too much further this way you can obviously go in more to the middle if you want this is about one and a half in from the sides there just in the middle and i'm just going to cut down nice and straight like so and then again on this side make sure you've got a protective mat my tables are very old i'm actually going to be recovering this so i'm not too worried and there's so many marks anyway and then i'm just going to come to the other side and just ever so slightly cut away from it so you're just removing a little slot there it's just going to make it a bit easier for the ribbon to go through especially if it's quite thick like my one is and then just cut the ends there and that should just come away like so so like i said completely optional but by doing it this way it ensures that your ribbon is not going to come out and you smash your bottle or <laughs> whatever it may be on the floor then you're going to slide this through and i did it so that it would stick about halfway between the two there now the length is entirely up to you again not everyone's going to have a bottle of wine but i just brought it up and then kind of gave my hand a bit of space from the top of the bottle and then back down again so i'm just giving myself a bit of excess there and then back through like so and then flip this over and just join them together there so just covered this portion with lots of glue i've said it many times but the construction glue is one of those glues that when you first put it down you know you won't really see kind of how stiff it's going to make the card it's always one of those things that i find a project if i go back to it the next morning it's rock hard like it's really really strong so if this is something that you're doing you know just give yourself some time i wouldn't put this all together and then pick it up straight away the handles will probably slip through so you do want to make sure that you give it time to dry but that looks like plenty of room and then i'm going to take this piece and i've cut this just slightly smaller just so it definitely hides underneath the paper you could wrap it if you wanted to you know if you make mini albums and things like that how you kind of cover the front you could do that with the base but i'm not worried about that and neither will my friends so i'm just going to pop this piece now over the top like so just make sure that all lines up nicely again lots of glue in there so just make sure you push it down and any excess glue you wipe away so just give that a minute to initially grab and then it will just harden you know the longer you leave it Okay, so I'm happy now that that's all easier for me to work with. Next, we're going to stick these down. And basically, you just want to line them up 
so that you have a little one inch square in each corner. Okay, so I'm going to, first of all, start with this one and just add my glue on the other side of this hinge. And then I'm just going to sit this down roughly in the middle there. You just use a ruler. You want to make sure you get this first one in the middle. So just use a ruler. So that's one inch and again, one inch. If we go over just a smidge, there we go, like so. And then just bring it round. I'm just going to pop the bottle there so that keeps that up for a minute. Take the next one. And again, add your glue. And then you're going to sit this now so the corner joins up with this one here. Hopefully that's all showing it. And then bring this one up. Again, keeping it all nice and flush with the bottom here. And I've got that little one inch square. I know you can't see it. Just in the corner here, you'll see you have a one inch square. And I'm going to use my coffee cup to hold that one up and I'm just going to work my way around and do the other two. Okay so I've got a couple of uh, drinks cups there and the glue bottle just holding that all up just so it gives it a bit of time just to kind of grip in place. Whilst it's in this position you can prepare these pieces and take your hook and loop. So again get a pair together like so and just pop them onto each end of this piece. You might want to glue these down completely. Again, if you're keeping this so it doesn't drop down, you won't have the hinges. You would have just stuck the boxes down like so, and then you might just stick these so they're just decorative. But mine are working, so again, um, they can obviously then all fall down if need be. Okay, so these are all secure, but with the other one, you didn't seal these tabs because I had stuck this piece over the top when they were all stuck down and then I cut the slots. So I cut these slots when these were already stuck down. So you can do it that way if you want. I mean, it still looks cool. I think you could put some more pattern paper over those if you wanted to. So now just bring up a corner. Oh, make sure they don't stick there like so. And about halfway down, you might want to add just a little bit of shape into the corner of this. Now I position mine a halfway down. You might want to come a bit higher, maybe do two, one towards the bottom and then one a little further up. It's entirely up to you. But you want to bring it up so that you've got that nice right angle and the points meet here. And then wherever you place the first one is then obviously going to be your guide for all of the others bring that up you can see there how that looks so just repeat that on the other ones okay so now you can see how cool it looks with those in but to be able to push them down a little bit more I'm going to start adding in my chocolate so I'm just going to open up one of them there and I've got all of these chocolate bars now, there's probably cheaper ways to do this, but I saw these, they were on offer in co-op. Most of them were packs of four for £1.25, which I, I thought was pretty good. So these ones here, pack of five with the Freddos, and they were £1. Yeah, they were £1.25 as well. Were they, were they a pound? I'm not sure, but I thought, actually, it doesn't work out too bad. I think for both of these, I've spent about £10 in the chocolate. So £5 each? And these are all obviously, well, even our normal size bars have slowly shrunk down, but they are the full size bars. So I'm going to pop these in. So I've got four flake ones in there. Close that up. And now you find you'll be able to really push your hook and loop better because there's stuff obviously inside and that piece at the top there. So see if I can get as much of this in as possible. If not, you can always put more inside the main compartment here as well. Like I said at the start, you might want to roll up some clothes, some pajamas. You could put something in cellophane. It could be a nice big candle and you could have all wax melts. There's just, yeah, there's so much I think you can do with this.
So here is the finished box. Sadly, I, well, not sadly, it was a nice that they come around actually, but I did get interrupted when I was filming and forgot to film the end. So here are the pictures that I've taken. My, I've now given these to my friends, but um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, sorry, it's late in the year, but um, I'll be back on track again next year now that I'm all settled. And um, yeah, I've got lots more fun 3D makes, cards, and uh, paper crafts to share with you, which I'm looking forward to. So thank you as always for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.